Thank you very much for being here until so late. <laughs> we'll try to keep it light. Um, this is a joint work with Alessandra Rafaeta from the University of Venice, and it is about minimization of a true concurrent model, which are event structures. Um, I will spend some time in giving a context to the work to, to explain what I'm talking about. And first of all, I'm talking about true concurrency, which is an approach to the semantics, which is normally opposed to the interleaving approach, where concurrency is not a primitive notion, but rather concurrency of actions is reduced to the non-deterministic choice between the possible interleaving. The possibly most simple example to explain the difference is the following. Here, on the one hand, you have a system consisting of two parallel components, one executing an A action and the other executing a B action. And on the, on the other side, you have um, a sequential system which chooses non-deterministically between A followed by B or B followed by A. In an interleaving approach, these two are considered equivalent, which is quite reasonable. If you close the system in a box and you are only able to observe the occurrence of actions from outside, then you will see the same thing, either A and then B or, then, or B and then A. In a true concurrent approach, these two are considered different, and depending on what you can observe, these are for good reasons. For instance, if you can observe parallelism, here you have two parallel components, here instead you have a single sequential component, or if you can observe some dependency between actions, some, say, causality, then here the two actions, A and B, are totally independent. Here, if you choose the left branch, then you will have that B necessarily follows A, which suggests the presence of some dependency. And among the true concurrence model, we are focusing on event structures, which represent the dynamics of a system in terms of a set of events, occurrences of actions which can, can occur in computations, and dependencies between events. And prime event structure, which will play a role in the presentation, are a particularly simple and popular model where the dependencies between events are captured in terms of two relations, causality, the fact that some events are needed some, for some others to occur, for instance, because they produce something which is used by later events, and conflict, which says that some events cannot stay in the same computation, for instance, because they try to consume the same things. This is a very simple example of an event structure with seven events. E1 is a cause for E3, meaning that you can execute E3 only after E1. E1 and E2 are in conflict, meaning that you can't execute both E1 and E2 in the same computation. And E1 and D5 are totally unrelated, which means that they can occur in any order and possibly concurrently. Typically, events are labeled to represent the fact that there are occurrences, instances of the same kind of action. For instance, this is a a rough representation of part of the process of going to a conference, you have to reach the airport. And for reaching the airport, you first need to either to take a taxi or a train. And imagine you do only one of these two things, so these two are in conflict. And then you have two occurrences of the airport action, one which is dependent on taxi and one which is dependent on train. And totally in parallel with this, you have to get a visa. And you could maybe get it immediately. Or you could need first a declaration. And so also in this case, we have two instances, two, two events labeled by visa to represent, to represent the fact that you have um, two ways of getting the visa. And normally in the pictures, I will use, uh, uh, I, I will name events with the label and some subscripts. For instance, airport zero and airport one are two, instance, two events with the same label airport, but they are two different events. And then in even structure, the notion of computation is captured by uh, the idea of configuration, which is a set of events. A configuration is a set of events which collect all the events which happened up to a certain point in the computation. And they have, depending on the kind of even structure, several characterization. For prime even structure, they are just simply causally closed and conflict-free set of events, meaning that if you have an event, you need all the causes, and you, have, and you cannot have two events in conflicts. For instance, in this simple event structure, you can start from the, the beginning, no events. Then you could 
execute the tax event, which has no causes, and you get to this configuration. Then you could execute the visa zero event, which has no causes. These two could be even executed in parallel. And now, since you executed taxi, you have airport event enabled, airport zero, sorry, and you can execute it. This is kind of a sequence of configurations that you can generate. And there are, in the literature, something which is also relevant to our discussions, that in the literature there has been several proposals of even structure which generalize prime even structure, providing some more expressive um, constructions. For instance, flow even structures replace the causality relation by a flow relation which allows to express the presence of conflictual disjunctive causes. In prime even structure, if you have two events in conflicts which cause the same kind of action, then you have to put two events for them. Instead, in flow even structure, this is a very simple example, you can have this event which has two flows, taxi and train, and the idea is that you, in order to enable an, ev an event, you need to first execute a maximal consistent subset of its flows. In this case, you have only two events in conflict, so maximal consistent subsets are just single events, taxi and train. The occurrence of each one of these two is, an, is sufficient to enable airport, which is a slightly more compact representation of what you can get with a prime even structure. And you have several other proposals. I will not spend time on that, but just mention, for instance, you have asymmetric even structure where you can represent the situation in which you have an event which have an optional cause like this with a primitive construction. What it is doesn't really matter, but you can have this some, something more compact. And then the idea of this work started when I met some people from the process mining community and they were uh, trying to construct from logs a representation of processes of which the, they had the logs. And specifically they were extracting mo process models in the form of event structures. For instance, this could be something that they got out of a set of tray of set of logs representing the process of going to a conference and if you add also the last step when you have the airport you are at the airport and you get the visa you can move to a conference you would have four more events representing the act of going to the conference in all possible ways having get to the airport via taxi having got to the airport via train and having got visa immediately or after a declaration and their question was, can we get smaller representation? Maybe because there is some redundancy or maybe because um, I, I, am, I want to move to some more expressive even structure model. So can, can we compact the representation but keeping the concurrent behavior unchanged in some sense? And I suggested, okay, but what you want is a quotient. You want, uh, um, this is your original model. You want to quotient it into a smaller one via some kind of morphism, which merge some events into one. But this must be not only a simulation, but some form of but concurrent by simulation. And as I said, just look it up in the literature, you will find probably many techniques for this. And apparently, there were no. And so we did some, some ad hoc work for their, their needs which was kind of working. For instance, if you want to start from here and you are, want to work with flow even structure, you can get to this. Um, but still there were several, okay, it was kind of ad hoc, uh, working on specialized cases. And so the idea was, can we get a more general, more disciplined theory of behavior preserving quotients for even structure. For instance, is the notion of folding as we define adequate for expressing behavior, all behavior preserving quotients. Does there exist a, a minimal quotient in some class of even structure, maybe a, a general one collecting all the possible models or does this result carry out in specific subclasses? Um, can we have a characterization of what is a folding without generating the transition system of configuration so directly on the structure of the even structure? And these are some of the questions which we try to address here. First of all, we work uh, 
to, to avoid to, to be tightly linked to a specific kind of event structure, we work on a general model, which was available in the literature, which are positive event structure where configurations are not induced by some uh, dependencies between events, some notion of dependencies between the event, but they are primitive, they are given. So a positive event structure is just a set of events and a set of POM set that can be executed there. So this could be an example. Three events, and then you say, these are my possible configurations. A, C alone, A alone, C alone, empty configuration, B alone, uh, A causing C, A in parallel with B, B causing C. So, um, okay, there are some prefix closure uh, requirement. And the idea is that uh, this represents the devolution of configuration goes from any configuration to another one whenever the first one is a prefix of the second. So, for instance, you go from the empty one to A, you can go from A to AC, but for instance, you can't go to C, from C to AC, because here A is a cause of C, and moving from here to here would be inserting something in the past of C. The idea is, okay, the, 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 the nice point of positive structure is that most common stable event structure in the literature can be seen as special positive event structure, you can view prime event structure as such, flow event structure, which I mentioned before, the bundle event structure, which has another way of expressing destructive causes, the asymmetric event structure are also is an instance. So we decided to work here. And okay, to, to quotient with respect to, to have a behavior preserving quotient, you need a notion of behavioral equivalence. And we took some kind of standard notion in the setting of concurrent uh, system, which is um, hereditary history preserving by similarity, which is a variation of by similarity, where not only you ask that any action of a system is simulated by an action of the other system with the same label of the same nature, say, but also you ask that the dependencies with respect to the past of two, these two actions are the same. This is the formal definition, but just keep it. I think that the intuition I, I, got, I gave you is enough for what for this time of the day and for what we will see and this is kind of a graphical representation so these are the two system and their corresponding evolution so not only when i move from some state of the system to another state of the system i must be able to do the same here but also the causal links with respect to the other events which happened must be the same in both cases Getting back to the original example of two parallel components A and B or the non-deterministic choice between A, B and B, A, these are not by similar with respect to that notion. You, need, you don't need such much expressive power for distinction, distinguishing the two, but okay, this is just a simple example. And the reason is that, okay, you can do A in both cases, but then the second system can do a B action, which is causally dependent on A, and this is not possible for the first one, which can just execute a B, which is independent of A. Okay. So these are the, the ingredients, and the notion of folding starts by defining first the notion of morphism between even structure, which is just a mapping from events of the first event structure to event of the second event structure, which transforms configurations into configurations. This would be just a simulation. You need more to say that you, if you quotient with respect to F, you, you preserve the behavior. Well, okay, you need subjectivity. And also you need the fact that if you take configuration of one system and the image the pairs consisting of a configuration of one system and its image on the other side, then this is um, HHP by similarity. But okay, intuitively it just means that the, the function is merging events without affecting the concurrent behavior. You can view it differently. Um, a subjective morphism can be seen as an equivalence, which says that two events are equivalent if they have the same image, and then if this is a folding, then taking the even structure e, the original even structure E or its quotient with respect to such equivalence, you got to uh, by similar things. A very simple example. 
Here you have a prime event structure, but it is intended to is a graphical representation of a positive event structure. And you see that you have these two instances of A in conflict, both causes a B, and these two branches, branches which are alternative, are in the same relations with all the rest, and maybe it's intuitive even though I, did, I didn't give any definition that you can merge safely these two. So this is a folding. So the first question was, is the notion of folding adequate? So is it the case that any function which perform a behavior preserving quotient is a folding according to that definition? Strictly speaking, no. If you take this function which just merges A1 and A2, this is not a folding roughly because if you execute A12 here, you have to simulate it here by one of these its counter images. But if you choose this one, then here you can choose B2, which you cannot do here. And if you choose A2, then here you could choose B1, which you can't do the here. But in this case, and actually this is a totally general fact, you can consume whenever you have a situation like this, there exists an, an even more quotiented even structure such that there is a folding from the original one to this one. So you don't capture all the, all the behavior, behavior preserving, preserving quotients but by a folding, but whenever you have a behavior preserving quotient, you have a, a coarser one, a smaller one by a folding. The other question was, do we have a uniquely determined minimal representation of a concurrent behavior, uniquely determined minimal quotient? The answer is positive, and the key result for the key observation for this is that if you have an even structure and two way of folding it, so here you are just taking some some merging some events, here you are merging some others maybe with some intersection. And then it is always the case that you can close this diagram and get uh, an even structure where you do all the margins that you did on the left and on the right, which formally, okay, I would just pick only a couple of times to, to this categorical aspect. You can view um, even structure with folding as a category, and this says that you have a, a push out, the, the corresponding category as push outs. Um, a very simple example, if you start from here, you could merge these two instances of B into one and these two instances of B into another one. This is a possible folding. You could merge A1, I, I, just trust me, okay, yeah, this, maybe it's evident, maybe not. You could merge A1 and A2 into a single event, these two B into a single event, and these two blue Bs into a single event. This is also a folding. And then according to the result before you can do all the merges and you will, will still get a, get a fold. Um, having just pairwise joining of folding wouldn't be sufficient, but you can actually prove that this holds for any number of co-initial foldings. Uh, which leads to the fact that if you take the, the lattice of equivalences of a, an even structure and then you consider the sub lattice consisting of uh, the behavior preserving equivalences, those induced by foldings, then this is a complete sub lattice, which means that you have a top equivalence, which is the one which is taking the most, the smallest quotient. So given any positive even structure, there is a maximally folded version. For the last point, characterizing foldings, a key point here is the observation that given every, every given a positive structure, you can turn it, you can associate to it a prime event structure such that the original event structure is the folding of the prime event structure. So you can unfold, say, any positive event structure into a prime event structure and then you get this folding from the prime to the posit. How you can do this, maybe it's not so important, but I try to give a vague idea. You start from the positive structure, you take the configuration which has a maximal element, 
which roughly represent all the different ways of executing a single event. For instance, for C, you have three ways of executing C, caused by A, alone, or caused by B. This becomes the events of the prime unit structure, and then uh, causality is prefix, and conflict is consistency in, 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 this, uh, in this partial order. But okay, it's not really important. Just remember that for any positive structure, you can get a prime even structure. And now, if you take a morphism of positive even structure, you can construct the corresponding prime even structures, which are connected to the original even structure via folding. And you can take also the image of this morphism over here. And you can prove that F, the original morphism, is a folding if and only if that the morphism over prime even structures is a folding, which means that you can transfer the study of foldings from the general setting of positive even structure to the simpler setting of prime even structures. And then the last step is having a characterization of folding of pr on prime even structures, which can be done. I won't comment, comment too much on that. It's, it's, these are just conditions which says that the morphism must have some, must be some well behaved with respect to labeling and causes, with respect to conflicts, and with respect to concurrency. I think it's not really worth to go in details to the details of the conditions, but I just observed that, okay, this is given directly on the even structure without generating the, the the transition system of, conf of configurations. Finally, one could wonder if the existence of, if the, some properties that we have seen before carry over when we restrict to subsets, subclasses of um, positive even structure. For prime even structure, everything works well. For instance, you still have a maximally folded version. For instance, for this prime even structure, this is its maximally, maximally folded version. In the, in the setting of prime even structure. This is not maximally folded in the setting of positive even structure. You could still fold B3 and B12. While instead things works less well for other subclasses, for flow even structures, and also for asymmetric even structure, but I'm skipping this. So getting to the conclusions, we get some initial answers to the questions I posed at the beginning. And um, for the future, some interesting direction of work could be some more abstract and general characterization of the results are presented here. From time to time in the paper, you can find more. I pointed out that the fact that several conditions have a natural categorical interpretations. In particular, foldings can be characterized as open maps in the sense of Joya, Nielsen, and Vinskel, something which suggests that one could give a more elegant, abstract, and possibly general presentation of the result, which is applicable not only to, which is making evident which are the ingredients which makes things work, which up to now, okay, I have an idea, but it's not really so explicit. And from kind of a practical point of view, one could try to use the the characterization we have seen before to derive folding algorithm, given a path that determine its quotients, or given a, a, a possible quotient, candidate quotient, verify whether it is. For finite prime even structure, this can be done more or less directly by using the, the previous characterization, but a, a direct, naive checking based on the characterization would be extremely inefficient, I think one can do much better. And another point, okay, if you have infinite even structure, you can't do it very much, but even structure are a semantical model where other models, operational model maps, and you could think of exploiting the theory here to study a notion of folding on operational models, so portion of operational model which translate to foldings of the corresponding semantics when you take an even structure semantics. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah, for instance, okay, right. It's strange to think that first and fourth and then fourth. When you 
directly, are there employees of direct, that are guaranteed to give the maximum for the Yes, yes, yes. This could be, this is kind of the idea underlying this. Uh, last point. So, um, if you want to, uh, you have a, say, a, a safe petri net, and you want to know whether you can do some quotient there which does not alter the concurrent behavior, this you could characterize by saying that you take a quotient of the petri net such that, um, since the unfolding is a functor, you, you take the, the image through the unfolding functor of this quotient, this should give a folding in the sense of defined in this paper. And if this happens, we are sure that the operation that you did on the petri net doesn't affect the concurrent behavior. So th this would be exactly, you, it's not that first you unfold and then you fold, but rather you fold the petri net and you check that what you get at the semantical level is a, is a folding. This would be the idea. Thanks. Uh, the quotient thing and the minimal quotient. So the minimal quotient uh, is unique. Uh, it's unique, yes. 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 And uh, so you talked about the existence of the minimal quotient and does there also exist that an algorithm to find the minimal quotient? Well, as I was mentioning, uh, if you limit yourself to finite even structures, then yes, but this, <laughs> this is maybe uh, okay, the existence of an algorithm is not interesting. Finding an efficient algorithm could be, <laughs> because up to now, if you just use the, the definition is um, just checking that some candidate folding is a folding is exponential. So, and you should, okay, the, 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 the naive approach could be just to enumerate the possible quotient, but these are really too much. And okay, it is obvious that this is not the best way to do. But so, it, yes, it would be interesting to find an algorithm which efficiently, whatever it means, <laughs> which, which improved the, the, the naive algorithm. Of Essentially, uh, the algorithms that exist for regular by simulation, so those algorithms can be adapted to your uh, notion of quotient in uh, the Really? But because, okay, you could take a different approach and map your, um, um, your system to a, a regular transition system. This is done, for instance, in several works about uh, history-dependent automata, nominal automata, and so on. You can do that. And after you move to a standard transition system, there you can use standard tools. But then you, you can't go back to, the, to a concurrent model. So uh, instead here, maybe it can be done. <laughs> I don't say no, but it's not totally not obvious to me if and how. Thank you. Um, okay, this is it. Thank you very much for the attention.